Hello, I'm Doug DeWitt, Transfer Paper Product Manager here at Condi Systems, welcoming you to another video in our tutorial series on the Laser Imprints Go Uno Color Laser Printer. In this tutorial video, we're going to be talking about paper jams, what causes paper jams, and how to clear paper jams out of your Laser Imprints Go Uno. What we've got to understand is, while this printer was designed to run transfer papers, unfortunately, nothing in life is completely bulletproof. And every now and then, you will run into a situation where you have a paper jam. So what we're going to discuss in this video are the main culprits of what causes paper jams inside of your color laser printer. Once we've done that, we'll go over the four basic areas where paper could possibly jam inside of your Laser Imprints Go Uno and the steps that you need to take to clear out those jams. After that, we'll conclude with some tips and tricks that can prevent jams in your particular printer. So let's go ahead and get started with discussing what causes the paper to jam inside of a Laser Imprints Go Uno. Now before we get started, please understand that we are going to do some things to our Laser Imprints Go Uno to make it intentionally jam. You do not want to try these with your own Laser Imprints Go Uno. However, while we might be doing some mock-ups or maybe a little bit of trick photography here and there, the steps that we're going to show you to unjam your printer are real steps. So if you follow along with these procedures, you should be fine. A few other things you really want to know before we get started. When it comes to running transfer paper through your Laser Imprints Go Uno, you always want to run transfer paper from the multi-purpose tray, not the cassette tray down at the bottom. Also, you want to make sure that you have your back exit tray opened. That way the paper path is straight in, straight out, and it will significantly reduce your chances of having a paper jam. Now, let's get started with what causes paper jams. Usually with paper jams, it can be a number of factors, but we can narrow it down to a few. One is how to operate the paper. In other words, if you don't have the orientation selected correctly or if you have the wrong side loaded when it comes to the print side. For demonstration purposes, we're going to be using this paper, Image Clip Laser Light. The reason I picked this paper is because it's probably one of the more finicky papers to try to run through a Laser Imprints Go Uno, therefore increasing our probability that it will jam. Another instance that might cause transfer paper to jam is the coating of the paper itself. While the camera may not demonstrate this, Image Clip Laser Light does have a gloss finish to the coating side of the paper. Papers that have a gloss or shiny finish are more than likely to jam than papers that have a matte or flat finish. By comparison, I've ran Image Clip Laser Dark and Image Clip Concert T hundreds of times or thousands of times through a Laser Imprints Go Uno and never had one jam. A lot of it can depend on the coating of the paper. Some other factors that might play into what causes a paper to jam are environmental conditions, mainly static. And as we demonstrate the jams inside of the Laser Imprints Go Uno, we'll demonstrate which ones are probably caused by static electricity within the paper. And once we conclude our test, we'll go over tips and tricks to show you how to eliminate that static. Another thing that could cause the paper to jam is either defective paper, defective product, or power fluctuations within the Laser Imprints Go Uno itself. And when we demonstrate those, we'll show you how you can reduce the possibility of have that happening. So now we're going to cover the four basic areas where paper could possibly jam inside the Laser Imprints Go Uno and show you the steps of how to clear each one. Here we have our first instance of a paper jam, where the paper is jammed here at the take-up wheel of the multi-purpose tray. This is usually caused by static charge within the paper where it causes the wheel to grab more than one sheet. If you look at the LED display of your printer, it will show you how to clear this paper jam. The first thing we want to do is to press the multi-purpose tray feed so we can remove our remaining paper. Next, we want to open up the front cover. and gently as possible back the paper out of the printer. If you notice a little bit of toner dust here on the sheet, you might want to run some plain sheets through your printer before you attempt another transfer. But once you have the jam cleared, shut the lid, Reload your paper and proceed. 
Now let's move on to the next potential area of a paper jam, which is on the transfer belt. The second area where a jam could possibly occur in the Laser Imprints Go Uno is on the transfer belt. The transfer belt is the black belt that runs underneath your toners and drums inside the Laser Imprints Go Uno. What we've got to understand is the transfer belt itself uses a static charge to hold the paper in place. And when paper jams on the transfer belt, again, it's usually a static issue. The static charge in the paper plus the static charge on the belt creates a charge that is so strong the paper doesn't want to move off the belt, therefore causing a jam. So what we've got to understand is we've got to remove some components from our laser imprints Go Uno before we can get to that jam. So let's discuss that procedure. I'm going to open my printer and I want to take two blank t-shirts, preferably dark, because we're going to have to protect our image drums and toner cartridges as we remove them from the printer. So let me take this t-shirt and lay it out. Because what we want to protect is this strip, the photoconductive wheel on our image drum. If we damage this strip in any way, shape, or form, we might ruin the unit and therefore have to replace it. Also, since it's photoconductive, we don't want to expose it to light for too long. So what we're going to do is remove all four image drum and toner cartridge units from the printer. We're stacking them on the t-shirt so that the t-shirt acts as a protective cover and it doesn't scratch up those wheels. Once I have them all removed, I'll take my second t-shirt, drape it over to make sure no light is exposed onto those photoconductive wheels. Now I can see the paper jam on the fuser belt. So let me show you how to remove it. Here's the transfer paper stuck to the transfer belt. Please note that since this paper has not fed through the fuser section, the toner on here is loose toner, as we can see where some of the toner has flaked off onto the belt already. Also, we do not want to touch this belt with our bare fingertips. The oil off our fingertips will ruin this belt. So what I'm going to do is take a pair of tweezers. You can also use some long needle nose pliers, but we want to make sure that we can slide it underneath use the tweezers to grab an edge where we can peel the transfer sheet away. We want to make sure we try to shake as little toner onto the belt as we can. At this point, I would take some compressed air, shoot it onto the belt to remove that excess toner, reload my cartridges and drums, run some plain paper through the printer, and attempt my next transfer. But now let's move on to the third area where transfer paper can possibly jam. Now let's discuss the third area where a transfer paper could possibly jam inside of the Go Uno, which is here at the fuser section and the transfer belt. In order to get to it, again, we are going to remove our toner cartridges and image drums and make sure that they are protected by placing them on an old t-shirt and then covering those to make sure that they're not exposed to light. Now we can see the area where the paper has jammed. You notice the accordion folds here. This is caused by static electricity. Again, since the transfer belt has a static charge, if your paper has a static charge, it's moving the paper toward the fuser. But the static charge is so strong, the belt doesn't want to let go. As the belt rotates, it's folding itself over onto the paper, creating this accordion effect. Again, this is a static charge issue. So let's get this paper jam out of our fuser. We want to unlock the fuser and gently lift up. Like so. Now that we have the fuser out, I can try to use these gear wheels located here on the back of the fuser, rotating like so to eject the page from the fuser. Remember, there might be loose toner on here, so try not to shake it off. 
But once we have the sheet out, we can reload the fuser, lock it into position, reload our image drums and toners, shut the lid, run some plain sheets through, and try another transfer. Now, let's discuss the fourth and final method of a transfer paper jam inside of a GoUno. Finally, let's cover the fourth potential area where paper can jam inside the laser imprints GoUno. Again, this is at the fuser, but instead of jamming at the fuser entrance, it wraps around the fuser and jams. You might notice on your LED display, it will tell you a 980 fatal error. Let's see what that means. We'll open up our laser in Prinsco Uno, and we want to get to the fuser section here in the back. If your printer has been operating, remember, this fuser is going to be hot, so please be careful. We'll unlock the fuser so we can lift, and what we see here is a sheet that has made it inside of the fuser and has wrapped itself around the fuser wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this fuser on the table and show you the best method to remove a jam sheet wrapped around the fuser wheel inside the fuser assembly. Now that we have the fuser assembly removed from the Laser Imprints Go Uno, let's get the paper from around the fuser wheel inside the assembly. One thing to note here, whenever this happens, it's probably not a static issue. It could be a number of things. It could have been a power fluctuation which caused the fuser to overheat. It could be defective paper, or the fuser itself could be defective. A 980 fatal error means just that. We have had a fatal failure of the fuser assembly, so you might have to order a new one. But let's see if we can recover this one. What we want to do is open up the trap door so that we can see the paper inside the fuser assembly. Notice the two gear wheels that we have. The outside wheel, if we push down hard enough, will cause both wheels to spin. But in this case here, both of these are locked up. So we're going to have to use some tweezers, get inside, and start removing this paper. Again, what we want to try to avoid is scratching the orange roller wheel inside the fuser assembly. If that happens, the fuser is definitely ruined. Okay, now let me see if I can back this fuser out. See a little bit more here. Get to where I can grab it and just start disassembling piece by piece. Let's take a front view of the fuser section so we can get a clearer look at that fuser assembly wheel. This is the front side of the fuser assembly. I'm going to reach behind to the gear wheels so that I can spin them. and hopefully use it to back out the paper. There we go. And again, if we have to, taking a pair of tweezers, trying our best not to cut the orange fuser wheel inside the assembly. Advance the wheel. See this section here where the rubber has separated from the wheel? This is what I would call a failure of the fuser assembly. This fuser would definitely have to be replaced before you could operate your laser imprints Go Uno. But as far as the procedure is concerned, again, use your back gear wheels to advance where you can move the paper and remove it from the fuser. If you notice any damage to the orange fuser wheel, again, you might want to replace that fuser assembly.
Now that we've learned about the four potential areas where a transfer sheet can jam inside of the Laser Imprints Go Uno, let's cover some tips and tricks on how to remedy that. As I said, the main culprit of a transfer paper jam inside the Laser Imprints Go Uno is a static charge to the paper. So what we want to make absolutely certain is that we eliminate or dissipate that static charge before we even load the paper into the printer. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. One is you can take a metal sheet and lay the print side down on your metal sheet to allow the metal itself to dissipate the static charge from the paper. Another thing that you could try is taking a sheet and an unscented fabric sheet, like a bounce sheet. Just make sure it's unscented. But gently wiping a fabric sheet over the paper, the print side, to dissipate the static charge. Then taking your sheets, loading them into the tray, and printing. Another tip or trick. You always want to make sure that your paper is protected. Whenever Condi System ships out paper, it is always in a Ziploc bag. So make sure to keep your paper sealed in that Ziploc bag or use some type of sealable container. The main thing is we want to keep a static charge from getting to the paper. That's the best way to eliminate paper jams inside the Laser Imprints Go Uno. So now, let's go ahead and summarize what we've learned today. While the Laser Imprints Go Uno was designed to run t-shirt transfer paper, jams can still occur. Remember, the usual culprit is a static charge within the paper, especially paper that has a gloss coating to it. So you want to make sure that you take steps to eliminate that static charge before you even feed the paper into the printer. You could use metal to eliminate the static charge or an unscented fabric dryer sheet. Remember, jams are probably going to occur in four areas. Here at the feed wheel of the multi-purpose tray, paper stuck to the transfer belt, paper stuck at the belt before the fuser where it folds like an accordion. All three of those issues are static related issues. If the paper wraps around the fuser assembly wheel, the heater wheel inside the fuser unit and jams there, that is a potential problem either due to power fluctuations, a bad fuser assembly, or defective paper. I hope these tips and tricks allow you to get all the value out of today's color output technology. However, should you have any questions about the steps we covered in this tutorial video, or if you need additional information, don't hesitate to contact us directly at 1-800-826-6332, or you can visit our website at www.condi.com for more information. Until next time, I'm Doug DeWitt, Transfer Paper Product Manager here at Condi Systems. My time is up, and I thank you for yours.